Judge Pie in the Magical Armor. Once upon a time, there was a magical armor. Whoever wore it was invincible. It belonged to the emperor, who loved seeing it sparkle. I love seeing my magical armor sparkle. Well done, butler. Now let's eat. <laughs> but all of a sudden... Ah! The, the helmet! Oh, no. Someone has stolen the emperor's helmet. Call for <laughs> Judge Pie! Judge Pie! The emperor summoned the most famous detective in the empire. Here I am, Emperor. <laughs> Lupin, what are you doing here? Please, let me take Judge Pie's place. I've always dreamed of solving a mystery like this. <laughs> well, okay, but don't forget, a good detective relies only on facts. Yes! <laughs> the thief must be found. If he manages <gasps> to get hold of the rest of the armor, he will be invincible. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Soy sauce. That's odd. Do you need any help? <gasps> My butler knows everyone in the court. He'll help you question them. Okay. Accompanied by the butler, <laughs> Judge Pie set off in search of the mysterious thief. He began his investigation when he reached the palace courtyard. <gasps> right, I'm going to question the cook. Oh, no, no need for that. He's completely trustworthy. You should start with the fight mistress. Everyone knows how fond she is of armor. Oh, is she? And let me add, she never talks to anyone. My cousin's neighbor says that she's quite nasty. Hmm, sounds like the ideal suspect. Well then, Madam Fight Mistress, I hear you're very huh? fond of armor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing to say? Hmm, that's suspicious. What's more, they say she wants to become invincible. It's obvious! She's the one! In the name of the Emperor, you are under arrest! Ha-ha! <laughs> 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 Someone has stolen another piece of my armor! Now only the boots are left! What? You see? I'm not a thief. <sighs> but then why don't you answer when you're questioned? I don't talk because I'm shy. Oh, I see. Well then, who could it be? I've heard that the gardener is suspicious. He plants only tulips, even though the emperor adores roses. <laughs> Uh, Lupin, have you found any other clues? No, but did you hear that? That gardener sounds sneaky. Let's check him out. <sighs> so then, Judge Pie followed the butler's advice and made his way to the gardens. Aha! What are you hiding here? Huh? Nothing at all. Yeah, sure. Huh? I'll bet you're burying pieces of stolen armor. What? Ha-ha! <laughs> 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 ah, there. Oh, no, not that one. Ah, see? He's trying to hide something. Hmm. Oh, a rose. Oh, I wanted to surprise the emperor. Huh? Uh, my rose! Huh? <laughs> the boots have vanished! Oh, no! <laughs> huh? While you were so busy listening to my accomplice's rumors, <laughs> I was able <gasps> to steal the entire suit of armor! <laughs> <gasps> this palace is now mine! <laughs> 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 oh dear, if I hadn't listened to that butler, I would have investigated properly. Now what can I do? Well, Lupin, you can still unmask the thief. You did find a clue, remember? <gasps> of course, the soy sauce. <laughs> I know who the thief huh? is. It's the cook. 
How do you know it's him? How do you know it's me? Because of the sauce I found on the armor. Good work, <laughs> but you're too late. <laughs> anyway, it's a good thing you changed jobs, because everyone says you're a terrible cook. What? Who dared say that? My noodles are the best in the whole world. <laughs> Taste this. Yes, not bad, but it needs more pepper. <laughs> Guards, arrest him. <laughs> His accomplice was trying to run away. Good. Toss them all into the dungeon. They can peel potatoes from now on. And that is how Judge Pie stopped the terrible plot dreamt up by the cook and his accomplice. The Emperor retrieved his armor and appointed two guards to watch over it day and night. The end. Hey, wait! That armor is far too dangerous. Someone else could steal it. I have a better idea. In the end, the armor was used as the palace's scarecrow. The gardener buried the helmet in a secret place that no one else knew about. As for the boots, the end. Well done, Lupin. Guess what, Mr. Narrator? People say I'm really good at making up new endings. Oh, really? I wonder where that rumor comes from. <laughs> <laughs> Pastry chef and the bewitched druid. Once upon a time, there was a highly reputable druid who loved making magic potions. I love making magic potions. One day, <laughs> the chiefess from the neighboring village, accompanied by the little pastry chef, came to ask for his help. Our fruits and vegetables are all shriveled. We can't get them to grow any bigger. And I can't bake cakes anymore. Mm hmm spell book. Give me a special withered vegetable potion. For a special withered vegetable potion, wash your hands carefully and mix a fern branch, three wild strawberries, and a crab apple in a cooking pot. Um, that wasn't an apple. The druid had terrible eyesight and would often get muddled up. Oh, no! Hmm, that druid needs glasses. Wait, we can't just leave him like this. I'm pretty good with recipes. I'll make a potion to break that spell. Hey! Lupin, what are you doing here? Oh, please, let me be the little pastry chef. That druid must be helped. Well, okay. Yes. But be very careful. <laughs> His fate is in your hands. <laughs> awesome! Don't you worry, Mr. Druid. I'll get you out of this. Spellbook, give me a potion that, uh, cancels out other potions. To cancel a potion, you need three fern branches, a fine cone, and a troll's hair. I'm certain I can find all that in the forest. The little pastry chef, who knew the region well, hey. set off to find the ingredients he needed to make his special potion. <laughs> Magic spell book, here we go! Wash your hands carefully and mix the ingredients together in a big cooking pot. Fern leaves, pine cone, and one fresh troll hair. Hmm. Uh, Lupin, remember what the book said? One must wash one's hands before uh, making a potion. Ah, hmm. uh, don't worry, they're not really dirty. Look! Oh, my word. All right, here we go. <laughs> That's weird. It seems that something's wrong with your potion, Lupin. Once ready, pour the potion oh. over the subject whose spell needs canceling. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> huh? My potion is working! Ah! Lupin, you turned 
turned the druid into a troll. <laughs> 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 I mean, the little pastry chef ran away from the druid, I mean the troll, and found refuge in the village. Well, how is our faithful druid now? Uh, I, uh, well, I had a small problem, but don't worry, I'll sort everything out. I'm going to make another potion. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh! Huh? Ah, there's everything I need. Let's begin. <laughs> Now I'll trap him with the biscuit soaked in the potion. The druid won't be able to resist such a delicious biscuit. Lupin, hmm? you didn't wash your hands. Uh, oh yes I did, I wiped them on my apron. You need soap to wash your hands hmm? properly. Oops. Uh. Biscuit! Oh no, I didn't plan on this. <laughs> Aw, you're just adorable, aren't you? Feed me! Feed me! Little pastry chef, whatever have you done? Oh, no, he wants to eat a little biscuit! Uh, isn't that what you uh, wanted? Yes, but no! I didn't know little biscuit would come to life! Feed me! Yuck! Oh dear, this is all my fault. Instead of saving the druid, I created a troll that scares everyone just because I didn't wash my hands. What can I do now? You know, Lupin, hmm? I'm sure you can still find huh? a way out of this. Hmm? You're right. I will find a solution. But I'm washing my hands first. Come on. Let's go, 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 go. Ah. Mm. Eat me. Eat me. Eat me. <laughs> Soapy water works like a canceling out potion. Now I know what to do. Yeah. Lupin, what are you doing? Yeah. Hey, Mr. Troll. Ah. Can someone please explain what I'm doing here? Well done, Lupin. <laughs> and that is how the druid recovered his normal appearance and proceeded to make a new potion for the village's vegetables. The end. Now, what can I do for these carrots? We can't let the druid make potions all by himself. He'll make another mistake. Hmm, I have an idea. And then you add an apple. Ah, an apple. <laughs> and that is how the druid and his new assistants continue to concoct potions for all the villagers. <laughs> the end. Uh, Luca, what are you doing? Washing your hands is actually really fun. <laughs> <laughs> The Little Fisherman and the Angry Volcano. Once upon a time, there was a small fishing village set between the sea and a volcano. The villagers loved the sea and all of the tasty fish it gave them. A tasty fish! Thank you, sea! You're welcome. But they feared the volcano and its fiery temper. Oh no, we must appease its fiery temper. I shall find the most beautiful of presents for the sea. The sea will be pleased and protect us from the volcano. <laughs> Lupin, what are you doing here? Oh, please, can I be the hero? I love giving presents. Well, okay. Yes! But don't waste any time, though. The volcano is grumbling. Okay. <laughs> Will be so pleased 
that it will protect the village for a thousand years at least! Woo <laughs> the volcano grumbled louder as the young fishermen set off in search of a gift for the sea and reached the heart of the jungle. So, what can I give to the sea? He noticed a very beautiful piece of fruit uh -huh. and thought that that would make a lovely gift for the sea. Hmm. Uh, just above your head, Lupin. Uh, a piece of fruit? Are you sure? Shouldn't we, like, give him a... Uh... Oh, look! <coughs> a parrot's feather? Now that's a cool present! <coughs> There you go. The fisherman picked a piece of fruit in an original way and returned to the village with his presents. Wait, what's in there? Wow! <laughs> uh, the young fisherman was drawn by uh, a light and entered a cave. Wow! Oh, look how pretty that shiny mushroom is! <laughs> uh, Lupin, that piece of fruit was fine. Ah, uh, there's loads of fruit everywhere. I've never seen a mushroom like this before. That would make an awesome gift. Ouch! Hmm? <laughs> oh, dear. Lupin, I think you've disturbed the cave's residence. I guess he doesn't want me to take this mushroom. Hmm? Well... This piece of fruit isn't so bad after all. Oh, you see, Lupin? That's what I said. Hey, Mr. Monkey, I have a present for you. <laughs> and there you go. Now I've got a totally unique mushroom to give to the sea. <laughs> oh, no. My unique mushroom isn't unique at all. Ugh, I guess this isn't such a good present after all. You're leaving it behind? After all that effort? Look, he said I'd find an exceptional present, and that's what I'm gonna do. Even if it means searching the entire island. about a present is the intention behind it. You must hurry. The volcano is crumbling louder and louder. Yes, of course, the volcano. There must be something truly exceptional up there. The young fisherman, uh, still in search of a present, climbed to the top of the volcano. Whoa, a volcanic rock. Watch out, Lupin. It's dangerous up here. Whoa, this will make a perfect present. Who dares disturb me on my volcano? I'm sorry, Mr. Volcano Monster. I didn't mean to bother you. I was just looking for a present for the sea. For the sea? Yes, obviously the sea is always the one who gets presents. Uh, I won't be disturbing you much longer. Bye-bye! Lupin, ah! watch out! <laughs> the young fisherman managed to escape the volcano with his gift. I've got the present! I've got the present! Oh! <laughs> Yay! Hmm? No! no. <laughs> Are you okay, Lupin? No, I just wanted to make the sea happy. And instead, I made the volcano even angrier. And now the whole village is in danger just because I didn't know how to choose a gift. You know, Lupin, when you give someone a present, it's the intention that counts more than anything. Oh, a shell. Now that's a fantastic present, and I know someone who will appreciate it. The young fisherman hurried to give his present to the sea, but, uh, Lupin... Wait! Mm. Mm. Mr. Volcano.
Little Kano, I've brought mm. you this present to apologize for disturbing you. A present? Mm hmm If you hold it up to your ear, you can hear the sea. <laughs> Magnificent. This is the very first time I've been given a present. Thank you so much. <laughs> and that is how the volcano calmed down. It never lost its temper again with the villagers, who no longer had to fear its anger. The end. Well done, Lupin. You solved the problem. Well, what about the sea? It still hasn't received a gift. Hmm. And so, the young fisherman gave the sea a present as well. Both sea and volcano were delighted, and together they became the village's protectors. The end. And lava grilled fish is truly delicious. Here, Mr. Narrator, a gift for you. What? Uh, Lupin, thank you. <laughs>